Hey everyone, today I'm going to use one of my favorite Call Me Crafty L sheet load of cards templates. This is June 2022 and I am doing a slight variation on the sketch, but I'll put a link to where you can get the sketch below and it has all the details on the front, on the back, and you can adjust it however you like. This is how it's intended. It's a fun fold card, so it's a card in a card. But I've previously done a video where I simplified the sketch so it just opens like a standard landscape A2. Today I'm going to be using the These Days paper pack from Coco Vanilla. They are an Australian company that one of my viewers pointed me to and I'm super excited to use some of their products. What I'm doing here is I'm sorting the papers into two different stacks. On the right hand side I've got the really simple paper designs and on the left I've got the ones that are quite a bit busier. I find that if I do this, I can then figure out with the design of the sketch where I put the busier papers and how I offset it with some of the ones that are maybe a little bit more plain. I've also got the cutter parts on the left hand side. I don't end up using these for the cards. It was just not needed for the card design. And because I do have some leftovers at the end of the project, I've bundled it all up together so that I can create another set of cards on another day. So I'm using my previous card to try and work out where do I put the busier pattern. Do I put it at the back with the 4 by 4 inch piece or do I put it at the front with the 4 by 3 inch piece? And so as I'm trying to sort through this, I try several different pattern papers to try and make that decision. In the end, I decided that the busier pieces of paper were better as the 4 by 3 on the front. So what I'm doing here is I've got a whole bunch of four by four inch pieces of paper and I'm just attaching them to what is the front flap. Next, I'm going through with all the four by three inch and I'm just attaching these to my pre-cut white panels. And these are all four and a quarter by three and a quarter. Now that I have all of the panels ready to go, I've got to figure out which combination of papers is going to work best together. Now, sometimes when I do this, I make a decision about where to put that front panel. And then when I get down to a few patterns left, I have to kind of sacrifice the best fit for one of them to make two card designs that I really like. So you can see here, I've chosen to match up the busiest papers first because I figure they're the hardest. So I've lined them up and now I'm running through trying to figure out, do the remaining couple of designs match well with what I've created as a four by four? I'm trying not to put two florals together, for example. I feel like they compete. So I moved the houses across to that separate design. Now I'm working with the third piece of pattern paper. And this is where things get really interesting. You'll see me fussing around a lot here and shuffling things from left to right. I'm happy with how they ended up in the end, but it does take a little bit of patience to figure it out at this stage. And I like to do it up front so that it's just literally a matter of gluing everything together. I decided to save a bit of time in the video and not show the using the ATG to put these together. So I now have seven piles of four cards and each pile has the same pattern papers used in the same position. That makes it really easy when I'm sorting through my ephemera. I'm trying to work out if some of the ephemera is of a similar type so that I could just pile them up on the top of the cards and then glue them all together later. So you can see I'm trying to figure out which paper fits on which design on the front. I'm sorting through, I'm finding some odds and ends. I really, really love this ephemera. It is absolutely gorgeous. And obviously it's from the same collection. So it matches perfectly with the pattern papers. I do find that with the ones in the middle, so with the butterflies and the flowers, any ephemera that I put on top is really gonna get lost. So I try a couple of times and then I decide this is really not gonna work. And so I just move those out of the way. This means that I can focus on the other designs and I'm nearly done here. I've piled up, you know, four of the houses on one design. I've got four of the ones with the people, four with the bundles of flowers. And now I've decided I'm just going to go for it. So <laughs> instead of trying to lay out which sentiment am I going to put on each card and make everything perfect in advance, I decided I'm just going to grab my liquid glue. I'm going to start attaching and I'm just going to hope that it works out. And you know what? It did. It really did. I am known for kind of fussing around when I'm using ephemera, never really quite sure where to put it, but I just dived straight in. I really do like these designs and the size of them is perfect. With this card sketch, you get this sort of smaller space to work with on the three by four. 
And for me, I find that a little easier to manage rather than trying to cover an entire A2 card base with a scene. I'm not great at creating scenes. So with these, I just picked something out and then I picked a sentiment. I did try and use the ephemera as much as possible. So putting a sentiment that says family or something that just says happy, I wouldn't normally do that. I would normally create it for an occasion and use something like a happy birthday or a thinking of you. But I decided that I was going to use what I had as much as possible and be a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'd be interested to hear what you do with ephemera. Do you always end up with a bunch left over and you're not quite sure what to do with them? Uh, That's how it tends to be for me. But if I can use as many as possible, then I feel like I haven't had things that have gone to waste. So this is the first bundle. I'm now moving on to the ones where I had the foliage and I love these trees. These fall or autumn trees are absolutely gorgeous and they worked perfectly on this orange and yellow paper. So I tended to find that if I really thought about it, I could find things that paired up really well. I try and use lots of different uh, brands in my card making and lots of different types of paper pads. I just find that each company has its own style and there's so many out there to choose from that I'm constantly finding new ones that I absolutely love. If there's a brand that you love that you have not seen me use yet, please let me know. I was so excited to get a new brand from a viewer. And so if there's more, please tell me. With this one, there is three that are basically the same. So I'm just putting together one of the Thinking of You cards here, and then I'll show you all four of them. Apologies that this is cut off at the bottom. I was not lined up correctly with my camera. We're now up to bundle number three. For this set of cards, they all have a house. For some reason, this first one is in a mason jar. I'm really not sure why, but I chose to turn that into a Thinking of You card. And then for the other three of these, I thought I will use a happy birthday sentiment. I need to add a few more happy birthday cards into my stash. And I thought these ones would be pretty cute. The houses would be really good as like a housewarming card as well. I don't really have a need for those. So I've chosen not to do it. We're now up to bundle number four. And each of these is using something that has flowers. There's the one that's just in a vase, another one coming out of an envelope. They're all a little bit different. A few of them actually do have writing on them. And for those, I chose to not add an additional sentiment. I just wasn't sure how to have, you know, some writing on the ephemera and then add a competing focus. So I decided just to not do it. And then for one of these, I've been searching through these little bits to the side, trying to figure out if I can incorporate some of them onto the cards. And I decided that this little one here would work beautifully with the coffee cup. So I managed to sneak that onto the card as well. The next three set of cards all have the really busy pattern paper on top. So I did keep the sentiment and the extra decoration really, really simple. So here I've got the, you are brilliant, keep doing that. And I've attached that to a couple of these butterfly cards. I think they'll be absolutely fantastic encouragement cards. And you can see one of them I turned into a birthday card. So I do use a similar theme when I'm working through the rest of these two bundles. If you're enjoying the video, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could hit the like button. This is how YouTube decides to recommend videos to new viewers for a channel. So it is very, very helpful for content creators. So thank you so much for your support. And I do apologize. I am working off the screen down here at the bottom. You can see the cards when I pop them up to the top and I'm really just adding a really basic sentiment, but I will do better to line up my camera in the future because uh, there is a few parts of this video where I was just a little bit out of screen. I have added a couple of links here to things I think you might enjoy. One is my most popular video and it is very close to 3000 views. And I've also put a playlist to a bunch of sheet load of cards videos. Have a great day.